The Lord be with you. And alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. alleluia. We continue to celebrate this Easter season, of course, the resurrection of Christ and the new life that he brings to us. One of the ways that Christ brings new life to us is through the, through the forgiveness of sin. And so I invite you all to stand as we together confess our sins and hear good news. And Kathy, I think mine needs to be turned down just a smudge. Starting to hear a little ringing. Thank you. We come in confession, trusting the love of Christ crucified and risen. Merciful God, we have sinned deeply and need your forgiveness. We have hurt you, those we love, our neighbors, and creation with things that we have done and things that we have left undone. We have lacked faith and have treated your promises as if they are nothing, putting our faith instead in other people and things. Create in us a new heart, forgive our sins, and return us to you with your deep well of life. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. People of God, hear the good news that is for you. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. By the command of our Lord Jesus Christ and in his name, I declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. It is a gift that is for you no matter what. Almighty God, strengthen you through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Thank you. 
pray together. Loving God, we thank you that your son Jesus is the good shepherd who cares for your people. Open our hearts to hear his voice, to know him as he calls us by name, and to follow wherever he leads. For he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Good evening. Could I have the kids come forward? And as they walk up to the front, could we sing Jesus Loves Me? Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me. for joining me today. So, who do you think I'm dressed like? A shepherd! Do any of you personally know any shepherds? Anybody that hangs out with the sheep all day? No? (laughs) is it that a shepherd does? What's their job? Making food? Almost. So then what do they do? That's right. They take care of their sheep. They don't let any predators eat any of the sheep. Anything else? They take care of those sheep, right? And so shepherds look a little different now than maybe they did back when Jesus was alive. You know, we have a lot of modern technology and fences to keep sheep where we want them, but shepherds used to guide their flocks, and they did exactly like you said. They protected them, and they made sure that they had enough food. They led them to places with lots of grass, and they protected them from danger or from predators like bears and wolves, exactly. And so that was their job. Because, and because sheep are maybe not the smartest animals out there, and so they kind of just wander around without a purpose if they don't have somebody to follow. And so they know who their shepherd is, and they know that it is um, the shepherd's job to keep them safe. And if they stay near that shepherd, the shepherd will keep them safe. Now, you might not think that you know any shepherds personally, but we actually do. You know who the ultimate shepherd is? Mm-hmm. Not me. God and Jesus, that's right. The Bible refers to sheep and shepherds a lot, actually. Um, we talk about the shepherds who are watching over their flocks when baby Jesus was born. We actually have um, a really pretty psalm that was written by a shepherd, David, before he became king. You probably heard it before, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He lays me down in green pastures, he leads me beside still waters, so I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. That was written by a shepherd about our greatest shepherd, who is Jesus. And Jesus himself says that he's a good shepherd, too. After we go back to our seats, Pastor Aaron is going to read us the talk um, from the Bible where Jesus said that he is a good shepherd. Jesus says that he knows his own, and his own know him, just as he knows the Father, and the Father knows him. And he laid down his life for his sheep. So Jesus went to the cross and died for the forgiveness of our sins. You could say that we 
art and to compete. So why don't we take a minute here and say a word of thanks and prayer to our greatest God. Remember your prayer position, hold our hands and bow our heads. Repeat after me, dear God, you are the good shepherd. Thank you for taking care of us. Thank you for providing for us. And protecting us. Help us to follow you. Thank you for your love. Amen. So, for joining me this morning, I've got some chocolate cookies for you if you would like to take one before you head back to your seat. I know there's some fun festive colors in there. It's Hershey Kisses. There's lots of fun colors. And I invite you to stand as we sing our scripture song. Our scripture this evening comes from John chapter 10. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf snatches them and scatters them. The hired hand runs away because a hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Well, this is always a particular week in the church year, and in this season of Easter, we always celebrate this week. Uh, Sunday was called Good Shepherd Sunday, so we're going to make this Good Shepherd Wednesday. And we always, on this uh, week of the, the Easter season, have the theme of God and Christ as our shepherd. And we hear how God, how Christ comes to us and is present for us as this Good Shepherd. And it's really one of the most enduring and endearing images that we have, isn't it? We get a very comforting, beautiful image when Jesus calls himself the Good Shepherd. It just sounds really nice, doesn't it? It conjures up Sunday school lessons and the covers of children's Bible stories and pictures that we have hanging in the church, uh, on the church walls or maybe in your, in your own homes, on your living room walls. But there is... Uh, an assumption that we can make when Jesus tells us this. Because if he is the good shepherd, if he is our good shepherd, 
then what does that make us? The sheep, exactly. And although what may come to your mind, and sometimes does to my mind, are images of, you know, cute, fluffy lambs, well, the truth is a little bit different from that, as Sandra alluded to, or not just alluded, but, but described a bit in her kids' talk. For one thing, sheep are not very good at defending themselves. They're not very intelligent. Um, they like to follow the herd, or the flock in this case, even if it's to their own peril. And they get lost and trapped very easily. So it's not exactly good news that we are the sheep. Because I don't know about you, but for myself, I like to think of myself as very independent and able to make good choices on my own, able to choose for myself. But the reality is I may be a lot more like sheep than I would like to admit. Now, sheep are generally helpless. They tend to stray, and so they always need that care and protection of someone else. In fact, needing a shepherd is pretty much the definition of being a sheep. It's the essence of being a sheep. So do you feel good about that yet? No? No, me neither. Well, if you have paid attention to um, comments on various social media outlets and online articles over the past year, you've probably heard the term or seen the term sheeple. And I can tell you this is not a compliment. Sheeple's a term people like to use to accuse others of this herd mentality of being led astray very easily. Well, this past week I saw Excuse me, I saw a video that I thought also really maybe is the best representation of being a sheep that I have ever seen. And I haven't, I know a little bit about sheep, but I didn't grow up on a farm um, or around livestock. Some of you may have more experience around sheep than I do. But um, Cadence is going to hit that play button and we're going to watch this very quick video. You'll see what I'm talking about. There's no sound, so um, just watch. Obviously, the sheep is stuck in a rut. And you'll get it in slow-mo in just a minute here, just a second, because it's worth seeing again, right? <laughs> yep, <laughs> right? It's pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> Like I said, it may be the best representation of being a sheep that I have, I've ever seen. As soon as he's, he's freed, he just makes that flying leap and ends up in the exact same position that he was in before. Utterly helpless, right? I love that position, too. Like, that sheep is not getting anywhere. He's, he's totally uh, legs down into that trench, and there's no hope for him other than his caretaker, his shepherd, Right? Well, it seems a lot like um, <laughs> a lot like that sheep. We often uh, find ourselves bound to do that. It's like we can't help it. We are bound to get trapped. It seems. Um, by the way, the caption on that video said, "Sheep gets stuck in a ditch immediately continues being a sheep." So, yep, that's pretty descriptive. Well, it's not flattering. Uh, but it is a pretty good this depiction of what we humans are like as well. Now, when Jesus calls himself the good shepherd in this instance in John, there's something particular going on. There is a backstory to this. Because it's not just about kindness and care, which is kind of the connotation that we often get uh, stuck in our minds about Jesus as the good shepherd. And that's not a bad image to have, a bad a promise to have from him that he is kind and cares for us. But there is a little bit more of a backstory. Because Jesus is actually speaking to Pharisees in this passage in John. And he's not just speaking to them, but he's rebuking them. In chapter 9 of John's Gospel, just before what we heard here tonight, Jesus heals a man who had been blind from birth. But... He healed him on the Sabbath. And the Pharisees take great offense at this because Jesus has broken a law 
in order to heal someone. And they are not happy about that. And they harass the man Jesus healed and harass his family and drive him away. Now, the shepherd image was an old one for the religious leaders and authorities of Israel. And the Pharisees then had actually been commissioned, in a sense, by God, had been called to shepherd the people of Israel. That's what they were supposed to be doing. But they're not. If they're worried that Jesus has broken this law in order to heal, they're clearly not shepherding, doing their job. And so Jesus gives them a word of judgment. And he contrasts a good shepherd with a hired hand. And when he does that, it helps us to see what actually makes Jesus Jesus, what he actually does for us. Well, a difference between a shepherd and a hired hand is that the hired hand doesn't own the sheep, as Jesus says. A hired hand is concerned really first with his own interests. He can only be as concerned for the sheep as he is for himself. So he's simply doing a job. And when those threats and dangers come on the scene, when that wolf inevitably shows up and goes running after the sheep, well, the hired hand runs away to seek his own safety and security. But, thanks be to God, Jesus is telling us that he is a very different kind of shepherd. So when the shepherd took care of the sheep, and we heard a little bit of this um, from Sandra earlier in the kids' talk, when that shepherd took care of his sheep, he would lead them into a fold, which is a stone enclosure where those sheep would be protected at night. And there was an opening in that round stone enclosure, and that opening was just that. It was completely open. And at night, the shepherd himself would actually lie down in that opening and act as the gate to the whole sheepfold. And that's why Jesus, just a little bit before this, we didn't read it tonight, but he calls himself the gate or the door. And so no sheep would be able to get out at night and escape the fold without running over the shepherd and the shepherd waking up or, see, or knowing that the sheep were trying to get out. And of course, no predator could come inside the sheepfold and attack without that shepherd knowing it. A good shepherd would risk his very life to defend and protect his sheep. And he would take on the attack for the sheep. And, and that's literally what happens. He's, he's lying in front of the doorway, and everything that might get into the, to the sheepfold is happening to the shepherd. He takes on the attack. He takes on the mud and the muck and everything that is, is down in that place that could endanger the sheep. But even more than that, a shepherd knew every individual sheep in his flock, and he would often give them names. He would count them all at night, not so he could get to sleep, but so that he knew that they were all uh, safe inside the enclosure. Um, but he might not even need to do that because he could just look at his flock and know if one of them was missing. The sheep would come to know the sound of the voice of their shepherd so that they would only recognize that voice and be able to follow him. They would obey his commands when he called their names. And he led them not by force, but by calling them. So Jesus here is really describing and telling us what it means to be owned, because that was the difference between the hired hand and the shepherd. The shepherd was the one who actually owned the sheep. The hired hand doesn't, and so he doesn't care for the sheep. But this is not ownership the way that we know and understand ownership because of the way our world works. So we experience ownership like maybe property that has to be protected because we've made an investment and we don't want to lose out on that investment. We paid for something. We're going to protect this thing that we own. 
or even worse, if we're talking about the way that we interact and engage with others, we might have a sense of ownership over someone, which means we can do whatever we want with that person or with something. The ownership our Good Shepherd has over us is about knowing us. Jesus says, I know my own, and they know me. My own know me. He knows us, but we get to know him as well. And so in that knowing, in that kind of ownership, Jesus connects himself unbreakable, in an unbreakable way with us. And in such a way that his own interests are above our own, or our own interests are above his own. He puts us above himself. He connects, us, connects to us with love and sacrifice so that he is taking on that attack on our behalf. And that's so that we can actually trust that this shepherd has no ulterior motive, no upper hand that he's trying to hold on to and keep for himself. And now Jesus lays down his very life, literally lays it down like that shepherd, in the muck and the mud, in the danger and the peril, in the attack, and even in death. He lays it down for his sheep, for you and for me and for our neighbors. But he picks it up again, and with it, he picks up our own life into his, so that now he is never separated from us, never disconnected from us. Jesus is the good shepherd. For those of you who wander and get lost, those of you who get stuck in that trench and cannot get your own self out of it, even when you're bound to repeat that over and over again. Jesus pulls you out. We are sheep indeed, but we can give thanks that Christ has come to be our good shepherd. And just in case you wonder if you are really included in that flock, Christ comes to you with a promise. Not a word of demand, but in a promise that was first given to you in your baptism when you were also given the ears to hear the voice of your shepherd. It was in those waters that washed over you that Jesus called you by name and said, this one is mine. And not only that, but when you uh, hear in the bread and the wine, you hear him say, I will take the attack on for you. I lay down my life for you and take it back up for you. This is a promise that you can come here to hear over and over again as often as you need it. Amen.
I invite you to join as together we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. You may be seated. We join our voices together in prayer, both in song and spoken word. Um, you are invited to sing with the praise band as they play, Lord, listen to your children praying. They're going to play through, play and sing through that at the beginning, and then we'll have our prayers and at the very end, so you're welcome to join in singing as well. Loving shepherd, you know your own, and your own know you. Your voice calls us to your loving embrace. Strengthen your church throughout the world that we bear witness to your expansive love. Gracious shepherd, you are generous with the gifts of goodness and mercy. Restore your creation to fullness so that cities and towns, countryside and wilderness may abound with life. Hope-giving shepherd, the nations and peoples are your heritage. Place into the hearts of all leaders and rulers the passion to serve. Crucify any desire to overpower others and give leaders joy in lifting up the lowly. Abiding shepherd, your love flows as we reach out to those around us. Move us with your spirit so that we lay down our lives for those in need. Help us love one another in truth and action. Saving Shepherd, you restore us to wholeness. Help our community and our life together and give us vigor as a people of faith. In the midst of challenges and opportunities, fill us anew with your Holy Spirit. We name aloud those who are hungry for your touch, ready for your healing, or nearing the new life. Especially, we pray for Richard and Lois, Joan and Tammy, Dwayne and Robin, Deb and Ronell, and any others we now lift to you aloud or in our hearts. In the hope of new life in Christ, we raise our prayers to you, trusting in your never-ending goodness and mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
Well, one of the things we do as united members of the body of Christ is to share our time, our talents, and treasures. And so tonight, and thanks to God for the resurrection life that he has given us, you are invited to make a gift that will strengthen our ministry and mission together in Jesus' name and for the sake of all who are in need of hearing of Christ's love and grace for them. Offerings can be given through our website, through the mail, or in the offering basket as you leave the sanctuary today. And thank you for each and every generous gift and for your partnership in the gospel of Christ. I now invite you to pray together in confidence in the words Jesus gave us. We pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Just a couple of quick announcements uh, for this evening. First of all, our grab-and-go meal for today after worship is chicken noodle hot dish, salad and dessert. Um, yeah, so grab a grab, literally a grab-and-go meal on your way out this evening if you're hungry and need, are in need of a meal. And we have a meeting scheduled this evening for right after this service for youth and parents. Youth were in grades 5 through 11. And you're going to get to take a look at some proposals for redecorating and doing some sprucing up to our youth area upstairs. Uh, so make sure you stick around for that. And if you know of somebody who would like to also weigh in and give their opinion, we'll make that available for them uh, in a different way if they're not able to be here tonight. So make sure you uh, let others know about that. All right. Oh, one other thing I want to make sure that you remember, we still have our uh, Dr. Seuss books out in the narthex for our graduating seniors. We're going to be honoring our high school graduates or upcoming graduates in just a couple of weeks. And so you have an opportunity to write them a, an encouraging note, a piece of advice, favorite Bible verses, anything like that. And so please, you'll have a couple of weeks to do that, but be thinking of uh, some messages you would like to pass on um, to our graduating seniors this year. All right, I invite you to stand as you receive the blessing tonight. May God, who has brought us from death to life, grant you faith to trust in Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen.
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Go in peace and share this good news. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. One, two, three, four, one, two, three.